So I want to talk about a really interesting property and something that comes usually under the conversation of linear quadratic regulators. And it's an interesting perspective of taking something where I have state dynamics, where you might imagine it's x of t equals ax plus b u, where u is the input, x are the state variables. We have m state variables. And we'll have things figured out by the dynamic a, a and may in fact be a LTI type system, so maybe constant. And the question might be, I have various state dynamics from u to x. I have all the x's available. I have every single state variable available to me. So that's great. And so what the conversation is, is that we should be able to build a control you know, this is sort of with the gain minus k, so this sort of going into u, and be able to stabilize this in, a, in where k is now a matrix. Now, I'm going to assume there's no additional input. There could be. We're not going to worry about that in this conversation. It, it's straightforward extension. But here's the thing. If I build a matrix k to do this feedback, that allows me potentially to to basically solve this, and in fact, and to stabilize the system. In fact, by putting k in here, you can notice by just straightforward math on the LTI system, assume constant k, and you get something where it's an a, and I get a minus b k kind of vector there, which um, allows me to then deal with uh, getting the right inputs for this structure. So, assuming that I can reach everything, every part of the stability part of this, Right? And this is what we often talk about as controllability, and maybe this is a reason to understand what we mean by controllability, because if I had all the state variables, I could go through U and control everything. Okay, so if I do that, that gives me a great number of opportunities, that gives me an ability to do this. And in fact, one can show that there's a whole range of Ks for a given system, assuming that it is controllable, that this would work. And so you're going, great, I could choose a K. I could make it stable. This is wonderful. The real question now is, all right, what would I use uh, in terms of choosing that? And it turns out there's a whole field that's talked about as optimal control, which is saying, let us find this kind of parameter and these other and multiple equivalent parameters by sort of minimizing a particular cost metric. And usually this cost metric is a sort of a quadra quadratic cost metric. We're going to call it J, of which we're then going to look at both the inputs that are weighted by Q. A Q is now a matrix, symmetric matrix again. So now we're going to get a sort of nice symmetric sort of convergence point. And we'll also have an R, which is again, symmetric kind of matrix, and converge there on the inputs. And what we're going to say is, I'd like to make sure neither of these get too large, right? So the U's are, are really a question of actuation. And R gives me a sense of what is the cost of the actuation. And Q is, gives me a sense of here's the state variables and how difficult it is to get to that. So maybe it's a sensing question. It's a sensor problem. Maybe it's some other aspect. Maybe it's the fact that I've linearized these systems and they have a finite amount of linear range and I have to be able to account for that and there's some cost to this. So there's a couple different regions I might be caring about the system. And then I want to integrate it over you know, all time, which is one of the things that makes this a little more interesting, because now it says I'm integrating this over all time, right? And so I'm going to look for what effectively are the biggest things. In some sense, you might say it's the average of it, but really the big things are going to come out. And so I'm really trying to keep the biggest sizes of the sort of sum of these two things. I want to get them both to work to make this happen. All right, good thing to start with. And so now when we start to work with these, the structure, you're like, great. So there's going to be some question of how to choose Q and choose R. And this is often going to be a question of what is my physical system? What is the interactions? Um, you know, I might be that my actuators are much more expensive than my sensors, so my R matrix is going to have much bigger values because I want to weight it in that direction. We'll also pick very, very useful matrices for these things. Sometimes the choice of that, you know, and the choice of that will matter. Sometimes you can even get away with choosing them as identity matrices, or one is an identity, one is just a constant term. And in this case, it's kind of interesting because, right, if you do that, 
And if A is much greater than one, then you know that your actuators are more costly. If it's less than one, the sensors are more costly. And it does reduce your matrix, does reduce your cost function into, you know, more looking like, okay, what is the, you know, uh, sort of two norm of X and the two norm of U, and we can start to look at these questions. So then that's great. And then you look at this structure, which is often talked about as a long-term horizon concept. And you ask, all right, I'd like to be able to solve it. And you're like, so you probably don't remember in calculus one or calculus two of how to solve this kind of optimization problem. Because you remember I said a derivative to zero and solve for things. Well, this is a bit more complicated. And to do this, there's really two sort of approaches that tend to typically be used. Um, one is dynamic programming. One is calculus of variations. Calculus of variations is classically built to look at these kinds of integrals that are your cost functions that you're going to handle. This is very common for looking at, say, energy functions or other cost functions that you want to optimize. So it definitely comes out of a physics mindset to sort of try to think about this. And what happens is once you develop this, you will usually create PDEs to solve for the optimization point. And for many cases, it may not be too bad. In this case, you actually do get a straightforward solution relatively. And the solution is very interesting. I do get a value for K. K will then be basically R inverse. Remember, it's that same R that we had over here. B, which comes out of the, the, the what is driving you know, how the states are getting affected by the input, and a matrix P. And you're like, great, now I need to find P. Well, P turns out to be the solution of a form of a Riccati equation. Now, this is an interesting sort of form of equation. It shows up in a couple places in physics, and it shows up here as well. And this is a matrix equation, so the order of things matter, and this is why you also see transpose and so forth. If you look at the first two terms, you're thinking, ah, there's probably some sort of optimization, much like we might have seen for Lyapunov functions and so forth. Uh, you see Q show up, and then you see this interesting term, which again feels like a quadratic kind of, of thing, because you've got an R inverse in the middle, B's next, and then P on the outside. So then you solve for P, and it turns out that there are two roots. This is a quadratic, so it's actually a nonlinear equation. There is one root that gives you a stable solution, gives you an optimum k. And you're thinking, some of you are going, I don't want to solve that. Um, and maybe for like a two by two, this isn't so bad, but for like large problems, this is, not, this is a big problem. Fortunately, there's a lot of computer tools that do this. MATLAB, for example. Um, but you know, there's other places where this is already coded for you. Uh, and what's useful is, the, so the solution of the Riccati equation shows up in a few places. It's useful because I can use it again and again and again. And so this allows me to sort of, by choosing a particular R and Q, it allows me to find what would be an optimal P and therefore an optimal K to solve this system. Kind of a big deal. And yes, if I take a simplified view of Q and R, I get a more simplified view of these expressions, but I still get a Riccati equation, and I still have something that's kind of intriguing to solve, shall we say. And But the fact is, there is a solution. There is a stable solution to this problem, and that's what's really cool. We can get one. We can get a solution. We can get an optimum stable solution. And then, in fact, we, by seeing it here, we can use it in other places as well, in, in other places where we want to get an optimal control piece. And this will get used again and again.